this is a new Volvo XC90. Nothing very different to look at on the outside apart from those luscious 20 inch wheels. And yes, it's attractive, but wait a minute, what's this? B6? Can it be? Yes. Now this B6 here, what makes it unique is that it's a four cylinder, but it makes 300 horsepower using both a supercharger of the crank, of a pulley of the crank and a turbocharger as well, back here. So that's what makes it unique. And not just that, it's also a mild hybrid. So interesting tech on this car. So what's it like? Now idle on this engine is pretty smooth and unobtrusive. In fact, when you start up, because it's a hybrid and you don't have the typical starter motor whir, the engine just comes to life in a soft and silent manner. Setting off from a rest also is pretty refined, but you can hear a bit of throatiness from the engine. Now, remember, this engine is supercharged and turbocharged and gets an electric boost. And when you put your foot down around 2000, between 2 and 3000 RPM, it begins to pull in a nice energetic manner. The eight-speed gearbox shifts up early and acceleration is pretty strong. That little bit of an electric kick you get comes courtesy a 10 kilowatt boost from the hybrid system. And then as you spin the engine faster, the increased airflow from the supercharger and turbo chime in as well. The engine pulls pretty well around two and a half thousand rpm and by three and a half there's much more tug put your foot down and it will go all the way past six thousand rpm and yes then performance is very strong and while it is smooth in general it isn't the smoothest engine around at these speeds this relative lack of smoothness is because the turbo, supercharger and electric motor seem to overlap and cause a little bit of a disruption to the flow of power. While this isn't troublesome per se, the manner in which it makes power clearly isn't as smooth, for example, as BMW or Mercedes's creamy straight sixes. And you can feel the difference. Performance is strong with 100 kilometers coming up in a claimed 6.7 seconds. The recently facelifted Audi Q7 has 340 horsepower and with its V6 is quicker by around a second. But the Volvo still delivers enough performance to keep things urgent and interesting. While Volvo has improved the 8-speed automatic, which is smoother and more responsive, this gearbox still doesn't like to be hurried up. And another thing that doesn't go down too well is the gearbox. Now, while it's pretty okay in a straight line when you put your foot down and does give you a sort of downshift, where it takes an excessively long time is manual mode. You seldom get the gear you're looking for and that sort of spoils the overall experience. So again, this car is best driven in a slightly laid back and relaxed manner. The updated XC90, however, rides better. And this is especially once you go a bit faster. Now the original XC90, the diesel, had a pretty stiff suspension. If this were that car, we'd be all over the road. But this new one, this B6, the updated one, has a much more supple setup to the suspension. These air springs and these tires, although they are 20 inches, are taking to this road pretty well. And that makes this car so much better suited to our roads and our conditions. What also impresses dynamically is the oily smooth steering. At low speeds, it's light and quick, making the XC90 feel surprisingly agile. 
and then as he go faster and he to steer into corners it remains very accurate club that with the stiffer and lower suspension in dynamic and you have an suv who can drive and even enjoy on a winding road switch to dynamic and you can feel the chassis tighten up you can feel it turn into corners better it feel more agile and responsive throttle responses are better and that makes it more enjoyable to drive it is in the sportiest suv in its class by a long shot but getting into sport does make it much nicer it's no bmw x5 or porsche cayenne and you still have to pay attention to body roll but you can carry a good amount of speed into corners and this just adds another dimension to the xc90 also in the rough with its air suspension it's reasonably capable it gets all wheel drive a dedicated off road mode and when you lift it up to 252 mm it seems perfectly at home with dirt roads and even some heavily rutted sections now on its race suspension the xc90 takes naturally to roads like this the air springs lift it up give it plenty of clearance and there's enough suppleness in the springs despite the height to keep things comfortable this road here is pretty badly rutted but what's it like inside those of you familiar with the xc90 will immediately find the cabin hasn't really been updated or changed much now the xc90 is familiar on the inside but it still has a great sense of style and the design is still pleasing this bows and bolton speaker bang in the center the vertical tablet the way this dash is designed the instrument panel with its white on black dials and yes on this one here you get this crystal gear lever as earlier these beautifully built shutters they're well damped and now you get a charging pad here for your phone now unlike the XC60 and the S90 this screen doesn't get connected tech and many of the apps along with it are missing it's actually basically the same as the one the car was launched with Volvo has also stepped things back a bit as far as quality levels are concerned many of the materials aren't as good as on the earlier car and some important bits of kit are missing where the cabin does impress is in that typically understated swedish way where it makes everything pleasant to use and then volvo's slim seats are both very space efficient and supportive now the seats are pretty compact and space efficient and they also quite sporty you get this extendable thigh support you get these nice bolsters on the side to hold you in place and the driving position is excellent the seats also get a cooling function and massage but they are a bit hard and not to everybody's liking now the seats on the second row are slightly smaller and not as comfortable especially because you're sat a bit low but comfort overall in general is pretty okay and you get a fair amount of space you can however adjust the seat to make more room in the back To brighten up the cabin you do get this massive sunroof there's a four zone ac climate control system and the hump isn't too large despite this being a four wheel drive vehicle to keep the rear cool you also get vents on the b pillar and these manual blinds to keep the sun out access to the third row isn't easy the second row only slides and tilts forward and doesn't flip forward fully Now this really isn't the most comfortable place to be in. You're sat very low, the seat is small, there's hardly any leg room even though this seat is adjusted and taken forward and headroom is marginal. Small mercies are this vent here and a place to keep your knickknacks, your phone and a cup holder. But of course, only for the shortest journeys and preferably for people who aren't very tall. It does however have a better third row than direct travels and if you need more space say like on a Mercedes GLS those cars are much more expensive. You also get a fair amount of kit on the XC90 stuff like heads up display wireless phone charging 
passenger seat adjust control for the driver, cool seats, massaging backrest for the front passengers, parking assist and a particularly clear 360 degree camera that's active and alerts you about oncoming traffic even from afar. You also get a fantastic 19 speaker subwoofer equipped Bowers and Wilkins audio system that has various listening modes and a 9 channel programmable graphic equalizer. This is also what Volvo calls an advanced air quality system, Napa leather in the seats and that very upmarket looking crystal clear lever. Volvo of course also leads in safety systems and safety tech. You get what is still an extremely safe body shell, loads of safety kit and these include city safe, pilot assist, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, park assist, road sign information, cross traffic alert, driver alert, blind spot, BLIS and rear collision warning. You also get driver and passenger airbags, a driver knee bag, side impact protection airbags and curtain airbags. On sale at a price of 90.9 lakh, the new XC90 offers a lot of SUV for your money. A well-rounded package, it gives you loads of safety systems, a clean-cut crystal-like design, an efficient three-row cabin, air suspension and a peppy new petrol engine. It rides well, drives with a fair amount of flair and comes with a well-built and put-together cabin. However, more kit and higher quality materials on the inside would have been appreciated. It lacks the smoothness of a six-cylinder petrol, there's no diesel option and a more significant visual upgrade would have gone down well both on the outside and inside the cabin. Still, even as things stand, the XC90 offers a lot of luxury SUV for the money. And it still oozes Swedish charm, which sort of seems to give it a bit of an X factor. While it may not be the luxury SUV for everyone, it's one you should still consider and keep on your list. It could be exactly the sort of SUV you are looking for.